Good gun morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Daily Mag Dump, your only home for daily gun news at the federal, the state, and the local level. I'm your host, Rick Barrett, The Arm Catholic. You can find me at thearmcatholic.com, first class firearm training with a foundation of Catholic tradition because the two are compatible. Happy Friday to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great Friday so far, wherever you are. It's going to be a great day for you. Uh, it is the 3rd of November. That's right, episode 188 of the Daily Mag Dump. Three stories for you to get you out the door on this Friday. First story, New Mexico mayor apparently didn't get the memo with the whole Grisham thing. And now he wants local control over his jurisdiction, even though that's a complete and utter violation of the New Mexico Constitution. But hey, Democrats are going to Democrat no matter what. They're going to they're just going to keep trying. Uh, second story of the day, we've got Ronnie D, the former guy in the uh, the former number one candidate for POTUS, who is man, politics is blood sport, dude. It, it is absolutely brutal to watch some of these guys who have such potential out there completely and utterly just fall, fall by the wayside. Uh, and but because Ronnie D comes up with some pretty decent points every once in a while. It's just that, and other people have said it, so I'm not breaking any news here. He just got he he just got sweet nothings whispered into his ear by the wrong people, and he made the wrong decision. And uh, this is not a um, condemnation because he was in a better position than I ever be. But Ronnie D goes after the New Hampshire Democrats who want gun control now because of what happened in Maine. Even though, as we broke down yesterday, and I have a video on the channel. Uh, talking about how what happened in Maine is essentially the nail in the coffin for gun control. It should be brought up every single time somebody wants to push red flag laws, every single time somebody wants to talk about yellow flag laws, every single time people want to talk about, hey man, you have all these things in place and you didn't do anything. And you still, and I will say it this way, you still, government, federal, state, and local, allowed it to happen. And you disarmed citizens who could have stopped this guy. So, good for Ronnie D. We'll talk about that. And then finally, from the truthaboutguns.com, uh, from John Boach. Only 0.1% of Illinois gun owners have registered their newly banned guns. Uh, that's... 0.1% more than I would like to see registered, but hey, what are you going to do about that? Those are our three stories uh, that will get you out the door. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, I want to give a big sh shout out to ReaperApparelCo.com. ReaperApparelCo.com, great company, great message. Very honored to be a brand ambassador for ReaperApparelCo.com. Go check them out. They've got great gear. Uh, my favorite collection is the Be The One collection. Be the one to talk about mental illness with your friends. Break the stigma around it. Check it out. Be the one collection at reaperapparelco.com. And when you go check out all their awesome gear and you're like, hey, I think we're going to buy something from them. Use the promo code TAC15 at checkout. TAC15 at checkout to save 15% off of your order. That is reaperapparelco.com. Big thanks to them for being a sponsor of the program and take 15% off at reaperapparelco.com, promo code TAC15. And as you can see as well, uh, if you are watching, if you uh, would like to skip Rumble and YouTube and donate directly to me, my cash app is Armed Catholic. if you think I am worthy of your donations. And I thank every single one who uh, who decides that I am worthy and you are, uh, you're awesome for that. Thank you. That's what keeps the show going. All right, it's Friday. Let's get you your stories, get you on your way. And for the last time this week, it's time to get to work. Good gun morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. First story up of the day. New Mexico mayor demands the power to enact local gun control laws. We got to do this dance again, don't we? We got to do this dance every single time, and we need to. And that's where they win. That's where the left really does beat us on a lot of things. Is because they are insufferable. 
They are insufferable when it comes to these things. They don't care. They will continue. They're like the Terminator, man. They don't sleep. They don't eat. It's always about this. Now, they don't believe in local control during things like cough, cough, jab, jab with mask mandates and other kinds of things. But when it comes to gun control, they are all about the local level. Ooh, give me local control. Even though the state constitution, the founding document of the state, as we've seen over and over and over again, does not give them the authority to, because New Mexico says, no law shall bridge the right of the citizen to keep and bear arms for security and defense. That's it. The question is over. They shouldn't even be allowed to do it. And this is why when you didn't take the most extreme actions within the political uh, realm, obviously, recalls, uh, impeachment hearings, if you didn't make uh, Governor Grisham pay the political price for her actions, then this is going to continue to happen. That's how it works. So the, the whole thing here is ridiculous in that regard. But let's take a look at this. This is by the great Cam Edwards at BearingArms.com. We haven't heard much from New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham over the past few weeks. In fact, ever since the federal judge gave the green light for her ban on open and concealed carry to be enforced at parks and playgrounds throughout Albuquerque and Bernalo County, the governor's mandate maintained near radio silence on the issue. That's because she won. I know nobody wants to talk about it like that, but she won. That's why she's quiet. Her ban was allowed to continue. Her ban was allowed to continue, and she faced no political consequence for it. I know Cam wants to phrase this as if it's some kind of win, but it's a it's a huge L for us. Oh, well, a federal judge. Yeah, great. You should look, you should listen to my uh or watch my interview with the awesome and amazing Dr. Anthony Cooling talking about courts. Ridiculous. Oh, well, the court said so. Okay, well, next time she does it and nothing happens, you're going to be like, I can't believe she did it again because she faced no political backlash. And you see the fact that the Santa Fe mayor's doing it. The green light has been given. Back into the article. The New Mexico State Police announced a few days ago that they're that their expanded presence in the city, which was also a part of her public health order, declaring, quote-unquote, gun violence, state of emergency, in the city and county has resulted in 140 arrests, but named no mention of any citations for violating the carry ban. And it's unclear at this point whether any law enforcement agency is actually enforcing her edict. Once again, the fact that you even write that sentence shows how, how much we took the L on that. The edict is still in place. Why are we acting like it's some kind of victory? Back into the article. Grisham also avoided making specific demands of legislatures in the next session, though Cam expects this will change as we get closer to January and the start of the 2024 session. While she's keeping mum for now, uh, for now, other anti-gun politicians are starting to make their own asks of lawmakers, including the mayor of Santa Fe. The new proposal that could allow cities and counties to determine their own regulations on guns, Santa Fe Mayor Alan Weber, plans to introduce this proposal to the legislature to make the public safety, to make public safety better. Remember, it's a democratic state run by a democratic governor with the democratic legislature with the democratic Supreme Court. So the fact that it's not safe shows you, just like in Maine, your laws do not work. They do not work work it does not matter that every town and wine moms demand action have influenced your state to do all these stupid laws you're number 16 in the union for gun law strength quote unquote your state is still unsafe but we're gonna do other things to make safety better shut up quote when we see something happening everywhere in America and lives are lost, then local officials, a mayor or a county official in that community is put in a position of saying, quote, I wish I had done more. I wish I had tried more, unquote. Hey, maybe you should have red flag laws. Oh, wait. Yeah, that didn't work in Maine. Oh, maybe you should have the police check on. Oh, wait, that didn't happen. Maybe you should. Oh, yeah, that, that didn't happen either. This is I wish somebody besides me and the in the 
couple dozen people that listen to this podcast would actually say all your solutions are garbage. All your solutions do not work. We just saw it. Of course, all they did was talk about the fact that, oh, well, this happened and these people died, which is terrible. They're standing on the coffins of these dead bodies. But when we actually want to do an after action report, when we actually want to do a deep dive and look into it, like the Boston Globe of all stinking places did, and say, oh, look, you have this law in place and this law in place, and the police went out and they didn't check, and he was involuntarily committed, and we didn't do this, and we didn't do that, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. You wish he had done more, Weber? Guess what? Even if Weber gets his dream of, of complete and total gun confiscation, it's not going to stop. Look at places like Juarez. And I use Juarez for a particular reason, because if immigration policies do not change, Juarez is going to be coming. I mean, cities are already, we just don't talk about it like this. It's going to get more pronounced. And I hate to say it that way, but Mayor Weber's proposal would revise the state's constitution to allow counties to have more control regulation. I will admit, at least he's looking at the state constitution. Quote, the point is simply to allow low, more local choice and more local control so that we at the local level can reflect the views of our residents and indicate that we take serious trying to reduce or eliminate gun violence at the local level. Right now, Right now, you have that in the state. The state of New Mexico has all of that stuff in place, right? They have all your foundational laws, every single one that every town wants. They have a ton of the keeping guns, quote unquote, out of the wrong hands. They went up from 17 last year to 16 this year in gun law strength. So I don't know what, I mean, I know what else he wants to do. We know what he wants to do. So, in other words, instead of one public official overstepping their constitutional authority, Cam writes, Weber wants every locality in the state to have the same power. It won't be easy for Weber to get his way. Thankfully, the New Mexico Constitution explicitly states no municipality or county shall regulate in any way an incident of the right to keep and bear arms. So the state legislature doesn't have the authority to approve a change on its own. Even if they approve Weber's proposal, it would have to be passed by a majority of New Mexico voters. And outside of Albuquerque and outside of Las Cruces and outside of Santa Fe, that is a no-go, right? Just like every other state in this union, especially the blue ones, they're run by the cities because most of your rural voters, either there's just not that much, many of them or whatever the case may be. According to one recent poll, 83% of voters uh, in the state believe a quote-unquote crackdown on criminals is the best way to keep families safe, not targeting Article 2, what is it? Article 2, Section 6 of the New Mexico State Constitution. I know Cam and others, and we talked about, I talked about this yesterday with Dr. Cooling. Everybody rushes to the Second Amendment, but it's not the federal government. And, and invoking it that way, if you're going to do that, just say the God-given right to keep and bear arms. If we can't agree on this, can we just, can we not say the Second Amendment? I know we have the attention span of a goldfish in these United States. And we have to make things catchy, but it's not the Second Amendment. There's a state constitutional right in, in New Mexico that is enshrining your God-given right to do so. Anyway, the poll also found 68% of surveyed respondents oppose the governor's executive order carry ban and cam doubts many of those folks would be eager to give their local mayor and city council the same power to enact ordinances infringing on their God-given right to keep and bear arms. Um, now, of course, legislatures may find it a um, appealing plan to give them the ability to enact what I like to call the space balls protocol, which is, of course, do something, do something, do something. As Cam even highlights, to do something without actually voting for more gun control laws themselves. His proposal would just be one of the many gun control bills introduced at the roundhouse in the coming weeks. And they'll have a much better sense of how much support it will have once formal legislation has been laid on the table and legislatures have a chance to sign on as co-sponsors. Meanwhile, New Mexico owners and people who love the right to KBR, keep and bear arms, 
um, should be reaching out to their own representatives and telling them, if you support this, we will vote you out of office. That's the only way forward is the political solutions. And the fact is, in New Mexico and in the rest of blue states, the fact that you did not politic you did not make Grisham pay political consequences for her actions means that this stuff is just going to happen everywhere. You lost. You didn't really make her pay politically, not physically, not calling for harm for anybody, YouTube. But now you're seeing other politicians follow that lead because you just, you don't have the political will to do so. You know, you just don't have the ability to change the hearts and minds of people. Uh, you just want the courts to do everything for you. And I'm sorry if this offends you, but that's the state of the, that's the state of it is right now. We got lucky kind of, uh, you know, as a Catholic, a big uh, fan of, you know, babies living. The pro-life movement is in the exact same position. They won the Hobbs case and now they can't do anything to save their life at the local level. They're getting their, they're getting the brakes beat off of them every single time there's a vote because they just want to run back to the courts because they don't have, I don't know. They, they don't have the understanding that it works at the cultural level and that laws and the courts, as Dr. Cooling said yesterday, they ride the wave they crest on public opinion. But you keep running to the courts. I'm sure this New Mexico mayor is, is shaking in his boots. Good gun morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Daily Mag Dump, your only home for daily gun news at the federal, state, and local label. I'm your host, Rick Barrett, The Armed Catholic. You can find me at thearmcatholic.com, first class firearm training for the foundation of Catholic tradition because the two are compatible. Second story of the day comes to us from the New Hampshire Journal, the New Hampshire Journal. Ronnie D. New Hampshire Democrats are wrong about gun bans in the wake of the main shooting. And this is where Ronnie D really shines, right? The guy apparently wears heels. I feel bad for him because, you know, he just got called out because he has the worst campaign staff in the history of man. Uh, he really does. You, you took a guy who's a rock solid number one pick. And it's, it's really akin to like a, a quarterback in college who is just ripping it up and everybody's going, wow, this guy is amazing. And, and then he gets the worst agent possible and he does these awful tryouts. And you're like, this guy's really good though. We saw him actually when, when we were playing, he was really good. And then they do the workouts and all this stuff. And he just falls in the draft. That's the best way I can look at Ronnie D. I think he, I think he just got sweet nothings whispered in his ear by the wrong people. Uh, I think his wife really wants to be uh, the first lady, which I get, right? You politician wife. And I think Ronnie D wants to be obviously president because he did this. I just think he should have waited. I think he should have waited, but it is what it is. Back into the article. Uh, that's just my real quick thoughts on Ronnie D. And uh, the, the fact of the matter that he um, he just he just shot his foot off. He shot those, he shot those boot heels off. And, uh, it's, it's, you know what I mean? Dude, if you wear, if you wear boots, wear boots, but the ones he was wearing, just not great looking. Anyway, I have a lot of thoughts on that, but this is not a political commentary channel. This is a gun channel. And he is correct on this. And when he gets into policy and he talks about policy, the guy's rock solid. He's awesome. But like, he just, he has the, charisma out the personality stuff that everybody likes about trump he just doesn't have anyway is by michael graham of the new hampshire journal.com new hampshire journal as new hampshire democrats embrace new gun control laws including bans on so-called quote-unquote assault weapons governor ron DeSantis told the florida new hampshire hold the new hampshire journal on wednesday the state should stand by its live free or die principles on October 25th, the shooting in Lewiston, Maine, that left 18 dead, the two leading Democrats running for New Hampshire governor announced their support for new restrictions on gun control. Two things here. First of all, state of New Hampshire, all persons 
and have the right to keep and bear arms for the defense of themselves, their families, their properties, and the state. Part one, article two of whatever their thing is, right? Is it a doc? Is it a constitution? Is it whatever? You know, the 13 colonies, they got these weird, they're not constitutions, they're founding documents. It doesn't matter. They have something in there that def that defends their God-given right to keep and bear arms. Um, secondly, we just talked about in the last story, the governors, the governor candidates in New Hampshire should be asked this. Hey, uh, why did the yellow flag laws not work in New Hampshire? I'll wait. The man was involuntarily committed. The army refused or failed to report that to the FBI. The police who worked, who trained with this gentleman didn't step forward. Why, why all the things that you propose, how come they didn't work? And what are your new laws going to do? Anyway, Manchester mayor, oh, I'm sorry, Manchester mayor, Joyce Craig and executive counselor, Cindy, Cindy Warmington support so-called red flag laws, which they didn't work in New York and they wouldn't, and they didn't work in New Hampshire. Why doesn't somebody say immediately they wouldn't have worked? Because they didn't work. You had a clear cut case. You had a clear cut case here. And yet nothing happened. Where were you? The police did a wellness check twice. They were like, oh yeah, we can't find him. People were like, this guy is hurting mentally. He's going to hurt somebody. And they're like, okie dokie day. I can't find him. Grr, grr, grr. And then they just went about their business. But nope. What do they want to do? They want to enact the space ball protocol. Do something! Do something! Do something! They want to repeal the constitutional carry law in the state, which is stupid. Extend waiting period for gun purchases. Violation of the state constitution right there. Um, and perhaps most significantly, put a ban on assault weapons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Honestly, this should pretty much put a nail in the coffin for the Democratic candidate in that state. New Hampshire is the last free state in New England. And if they get away with it there, then New England is truly fallen. New Hampshire is like an outpost of freedom at this point. Back into the article. While there's no definition of the phrase, gun control advocates generally use the term to describe a semi-automatic rifle with a military-style appearance, i.e. the scary weapon. The AR-15 the gun used in the main shooting and the most popular rifle sold in the U.S. is generally considered an assault weapon. Generally considered because you're all stupid. That's what that means. That's it's generally considered that way because you're all a bunch of stinking morons. Quote, our congressional delegation has co-sponsored legislation to ban assault weapons at, on a national level, um, which won't go anywhere because it violates Bruin. Right now it violates Bruin. Uh, but because Republicans in D.C. have blocked this critical legislation, state-level action is necessary, Warmer cried in between, you know, shovings of lobster rolls at a press conference last week. Um, I get, uh, and asked by New Hampshire Journal about the push for gun bans by Granite State Democrats, Ronnie D. said he disagreed, saying, I stand with New Hampshire as the live free or die state. What happened in Maine is a terrible thing, he said. Obviously, there should have been an intervention with what happened leading up to the shooting, which they could have done with yellow flag laws. They had the system in place. Now, I'm not a fan of any of these, but at least yellow flag laws, you have to talk to a licensed mental health specialist before you just go take everybody's guns. Unlike red flag laws, which is what Democrats love because it gives the ability for them to confiscate your weapon and never give it back to you. The yellow flag laws would have worked in this case. They would have presented it to a mental health professional. They would have looked at it and said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This dude was that he was involuntarily committed. You've got multiple people. Uh, his, his, comp, his, his, uh, the people that he serves with his his family. You've got multiple people. It's not just one person that saw you yell at a girl at the, in the Wendy's drive through. We've got multiple instances. We should probably have him go reach out. We're not going to take his guns, 
We're going to, we're going to supervise him reaching out to holdmyguns.org. Great organization. There's a link to an interview with the founder, Sarah Albright in my uh, playlist. And they will store the guns in a private FFL offsite until this man can get the treatment he obviously needs. Nope. What do we do? Just take the guns. Just take the guns. That's all they scream. They're like the Cartman, right? Put a chicken in it. Make her gay. That's pretty much the Democratic response to these things. Take their guns. Anyway, we know that. Ronnie D continued. But but to turn around and, and try to cure that by going after people's individual rights, that's not going to work. New Hampshire has always stood against that. He's a, He's correct. Taking away your individual right to keep and bear arms, my individual right to keep and bear arms, the people in Maine who were denied that right because they couldn't bring their guns in because the bowling alley got scared. Even though if you conceal carry, nobody knows you're concealed carrying unless you suck at it. That's not the solution. Pre-crime is not the solution. Back into the article. Uh, DeSantis does agree with Democrat Craig and Warmington that New Hampshire has relatively few restrictions on gun ownership, but unlike the Democrats who decry the state's current gun laws, Craig complains that there are, quote, some of the weakest laws in the, c- the entire country, unquote. DeSantis supports the Granite State's approach. New Hampshire has, quote, always understood, even Vermont and Maine, too, to an extent. These are states that have always believed your ability to protect yourself, and they've really done well in upholding the Second Amendment. They've really done well at expanding their state power, especially the state of New Hampshire. As you can tell, I'm a New Hampshire uh, stan. I love the state of New Hampshire. I wish I didn't get to go there this year. I was very sad about that. DeSantis said the focus should be on mental illness, and he argues that it was public health policy, not gun law, that failed in Maine. The yellow flag law, which is a reflection of red flag laws, they failed. It's always red flag laws, extreme risk protection orders. We need them now. And then it's like, what happened in Maine? Well, don't, don't look at that one. Can somebody give me a successful example of a red flag law that prevented a mass shooting? I'd like to see one. We, we confiscated these guns and we know for a fact that, do you? No, you don't. And then you got this blonde bimbo. I don't even know. Uh, I didn't. I didn't take the time to find her. Um, her information. Maybe I can. I don't know if this is even worth it or not. She's out there on Twitter talking about you're not going to be the hero. Oh, of course, she's the first one that came up. You're not going to be the hero. They put a. They put a pretty young thing with a stupid opinion out there, and of course, all your beta males are going to swoon over it. Okay, even though that's not the way to be. You should, men and women, take the time to defend yourself. But, of course, the power of the white woman is out there, and they think that they know best because society has told them one thing or another. Let's see if I can get this thing up uh, while we're talking. So the, these these people are screaming about this. They're screaming about this, and they're all reflective of this white woman. Now, don't, don't get... Don't get uh, confused because she's your average looking white woman. Listen to the message. I'm telling you. Just gun and a perpetrator walks in with a military style weapon and a bulletproof vest. There's literally no way you're going to be able to defend yourself. Banning these weapons of war on the street isn't about infringing on you. It's about protecting you. Shut up. Shut up. Honey. I train for body armor. Mozambique, baby. These people don't know what the hell they're talking about. And that's what they argue. They argue from a position of, I'm on TikTok. I'm slightly above average looking. And you're going to listen to what I have to say. That's probably why nobody watches this show. (laughs) Anyway. um, So the Boston Globe reported Tuesday that the shooter was, quote unquote, involuntarily committed to a mental hospital in New York this summer after exhibiting erratic behavior during training. That's it right there. That's it. This thing failed. And of course, they they kind of go over um, the rest of this. We'll go to this last part right here. It's ironic. um, Asked about Democrats arguing that focusing on mental health isn't enough when it comes to fighting gun violence. 
and if he believed gun bans and other restrictions were needed, Laparo, Lapato, I don't even know who that is. Um, now who's the, oh, the state surgeon general uh, said that the focus on firearms rather than overall mental health is pure politics. Quote, it's ironic. The same people who worsened everybody's mental health over the last few years are also the same ones who only want to focus on firearms. Dr. Lapato said it's total nonsense. We have a lot of problems in our society, physical abuse, emotional abuse, firearm violence. There's a lot of problems that are related to mental health. It's a worthwhile problem to really work. Ah, shut up. The, the fact of the matter is you had all your pretty little things in place. You had all your pretty little things in place in, in Maine and it didn't work. And despite what the, the woman, the white woman thinks with her power, nobody's you can't be the hero. Nobody's going to save you woman. I'm going to save my wife and I'm going to save myself. I'm a licensed firearm instructor. I'm trained by the USCCA. I actually do train with my firearm. Not as much with my, my, uh, long guns. I need to get on that, but that should be for me and me only to decide. Gun morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Daily Mag Dump, your only home for daily gun news at the federal, state, and local level. I'm your host, Rick Barrett, the Armed Catholic. You can find me at thearmedcatholic.com, first class firearm training with the foundation of Catholic tradition because the two are compatible. If you disagree with what this white woman says, you should uh, definitely sign up for one of my trainings and I can help you become better prepared. Last story of the day, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here we go. Here's a great story coming out of the state of Illinois, the place where my I'm going to I'm going to call him a friend, Dr. Anthony Cooling. Our interview is a latest interview of the Armed Catholic interviews. You should check it out. He lives in the state of Illinois and he talks about Illinois and how it's actually split into threes. It's very interesting. All right. Great headline here coming out of the truthaboutguns.com. We will not comply. Only 0.1% of Illinois gun owners have registered their newly banned guns so far, and they're probably all Democrats. By John Boach. According to Illinois State Police data, 2,415,481 gun owners called the Land o' Lincoln home. Earlier this year, Governor J.B. Fatster, I'm sorry, Pritzker, signed the so-called Protect Illinois Community Act, which is completely unconstitutional and violates the state of Illinois' constitution, which is actually pretty impressive that they were able to do both. Article 1, Section 22, enacted in 1970. Um, So, this supposed act banned the most, uh, many of the most popular guns used for self-defense under the law. Existing owners of these now verboten firearms must register their guns by January 1st, 2024, or face felony charges, right? You're going to face felony charges. Oh, no. Four weeks into the registration window, exactly 242,000, I wish it was 200, 2,430 of those FOIA holders have registered their guns, accessories, or 50 caliber firearms. Uh, If that works out to 0.1006%, or about one in a thousand. What's even more remarkable is the number of FOIA holders choosing choosing to comply has fallen with each passing week. In other words, Illinois gun owners have declined to participate in the state's illegal unconstitutional gun ban. Granted, not all FOIA holders own the guns that are now banned under the law. However, given the popularity of America's favorite rifle, the AR-15, not to mention semi-automatic shotguns, sale numbers suggest that the majority of them have at least one semi-automatic rifle or shotgun in their collection, or a gas, a handgun with a threaded barrel. As executive director of Guns Save Lives, uh, Josh has heard from numerous gun owners across the state. GSL has meetings, blah, blah, blah. Great. Uh, You know, okay. Um, Either way, Gun, Gun Save Lives has taken the position that gun owners should not register anything. In fact, do not register is the cover story in their issue, which I believe is accurate. The state, according to the state constitution, they're violating your right to keep and bear arms. 
they're infringing on it. So why give them the pleasure of knowing and registering? It's the same thing that happened with the pistol brace ban, man. Why deal with it? Why even give it the time of day? But good for the people in the state of Illinois, right? Just a real quick story, just a heads up. There are great people in the state of Illinois pushing back against this fat idiot and their unconstitutional gun grabs and um, continue to not register and continue to not participate in the violation of your God-given right to keep and bear arm. Your constitutional right as the state of, of Illinois has in its constitution, they cannot infringe on your God-given right to keep and bear arms. And of course, if you want to invoke it, the Second Amendment and Bruin, where this unconstitutional law violates the spirit of the Second Amendment. So it's a, it's a, you know, it's a hat trick when it comes to the violation of your God given rights. So good for the people of Illinois. Do not comply and continue to not comply. All right, folks, that's it for this episode of the Daily Mag Dump. You're only home for daily gun news at the federal, state, and local level. I'm your host, Rick Barrett, The Arm Catholic. You can find me at thearmcatholic.com. First class firearm training for the foundation of Catholic tradition because the two are compatible. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me. Big shout out once again to reaperapparelco.com. Check them out. Link in the description box down below. Get 15% off your order with the promo code TAC15. And if you think this show is worthy of any cash donations, the armed Catholic, I'm sorry, just armed Catholic on Cash App. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all have a great weekend. I will see you on Monday, barring any absolutely world-ending events. Um, this afternoon, on the Friday afternoon news dump, I made, you know, if it's, it's, it's a huge thing, I'll do a live stream. If not, I will talk to you all on Monday. Get armed. Get trained. Stay safe. Stay ready. <laughs> Thank you.